I don't think you need to be an expert to look around and see the increasing frequency of fires throughout California. They're continuing at a ever increasing rate every summer. And as we all know, the drought continues. We have huge shortages of water right now. And so I, I don't think you have to be an expert to see the impact. When people create greenhouse gases, we're doing so by different activities, like burning fossil fuels, we are letting off carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. But we also do this through food waste. And so when we are wasting solid food and leaving it in a landfill, it puts out methane gas into the atmosphere, which is a really potent greenhouse gas. And that accelerates the rate at which we are warming our planet and makes all the effects of climate change worse. The good news is there are a lot of things you can be doing, particularly composting. And then the added benefit is if when the compost is actually applied to the soil, it has the ability to reverse climate change by pulling carbon out of the atmosphere and into the soil and the roots. And there's a huge amount of science that's kind of breaking right now around that. In the early 90s, San Francisco hired some engineers to analyze the material San Francisco was sending to landfill. They did a waste characterization study, and that showed that most of the material San Francisco was sending to landfill could be composted. It was things like food scraps, like coffee grounds and banana peels and eggshells, and then sticks and leaves from gardening. Together, Recology in San Francisco started this curbside composting program. We were the first city in the country to collect food scraps separately from other trash and turn them into compost. It turns out that it's one of the best things we ever did. It kept 2.5 million tons of material out of the landfill, produced a beautiful nutrient-rich compost that has gone on to hundreds of farms, orchards, and vineyards. So in that way, you can manage your food scrap and produce far less methane. That's part of the solution. That gives people hope. Then we're doing something to slow down climate change. I've been into organic farming my whole life. When we started planting trees here 15 years ago, you know, it was very natural to just go get some compost from Recology. So compost is just the air I breathe. How it works in nature is that the soil biology or the microbes in the soil feed the plants. And our job as farmers, as regenerative farmers, we feed the microbes with compost and they'll feed the plants. It's very much like in business where you say, take care of your employees and your employees will take care of your customers. It's the same thing. Take care of your soil microbes, the soil life, and that soil life will feed and take care of the plants. They love compost because it's a nutrient-rich soil amendment. It's food for the soil. That's photosynthesis, pulling carbon from the atmosphere, pushing it back into the soil where it belongs. And those roots exude carbon into the soil. You're helping turn a farm into a carbon sink. It's really an international model. Delegations from 135 countries have come to study this program. And it actually helped inspire a new law in California, Senate Bill 1383, which requires cities up and down California to reduce the amount of compostable material they send to landfills by 75% by 2025. And San Francisco helped inspire this. This is a nation-leading policy. Because we have such an immature relationship with nature and with natural cycles and the carbon cycles, government does have to step in and protect the commons, which is soil, ocean, forests, and so forth. We know that our largest corporations are a significant percentage of, of carbon emissions and that the corporate community has a significant role to play in reducing carbon emissions. But unfortunately, we really have no idea. There's no requirement that they disclose anything about their carbon footprint, about their core operations and their supply chains and so forth. SB 260 stands for the basic notion that large corporations should be transparent about their carbon footprint. And it makes all the sense in the world. It's very common sense, but it is uh, controversial. Anytime you're proposing a policy that's going to make real change and that will change behavior, because we know that when corporations have to disclose and be transparent and have that kind of accountability, there's going to be opposition. 
We also provide technical assistance to businesses right now to comply with a state legislation, SB 1383, which requires them to have a food donation program. So we keep the edible food local and we're not composting it because we don't want to compost edible food. We want that food to get eaten within San Francisco and feed folks in need. It's very unique that in San Francisco we have such a broad and expansive environmental education program for the city, but also that we have partners um, both in government and nonprofit that are dedicated to this work. At San Francisco Unified School District, we have a sustainability office, and we actually have educators all throughout in the science department that are building it into the curriculum, making it easy for teachers to teach about this. We work together to build like a pipeline for students so that when they're really young in pre-K, they're just learning about the awe and the wonder and beauty of nature, and they're connecting to animals and things they would naturally find love and affinity towards. And then as they get older, we start to introduce concepts that keep them engaged, like society and people and economics. California is experiencing many years of drought, dry periods. That's really hard on farms. It's really challenging. Compost helps farms get through these difficult times. How is that? Compost is a natural sponge that attracts and retains water. And so when we put compost around the roots of plants, it holds any moisture there from rainfall or irrigation. It helps farms make that corner and that helps them grow more food. You can grow 30% more food in times of drought if you farm naturally with compost. Farms and cities in California are very hip now to this fact that creating compost, providing compost to farms helps communities survive and get through those dry periods. Here's the thing, soil health, climate health, human health, one conversation. If we grow our food differently, if we capture, we can capture all that excess carbon in the atmosphere and store it in unlimited quantities in the soil, that will create nutrient-dense food that will take care of most of our civilized diseases. So it's one conversation. People have to understand they are nature. They can't separate. We started plowing the high plains in about the 1870s, and by the 1930s, 60 years, we turned it into a dust bowl. That's what ignorance looks like when you don't pay attention to nature. Nature bats last. So people got to wake up. Wake up! Compost! It's really easy to get frustrated because we have this belief that you have to be completely sustainable 24-7 in all aspects of your life. So it's not about being perfect. It's about making a change here, a change there in your life. You know, maybe saying, you know, I don't have to drive to that particular place today. Today I'm gonna to take the bus or I'm gonna walk. It's about having sustainability in mind. That's how we move the dial. You don't have to be perfect all the time. San Francisco has always been and continues to be one of the greenest cities in the U.S. because there have always been communities here who cared about protecting such a special ecosystem and habitat. Thinking about the history of the Ohlone, uh, and the native and indigenous peoples who've always stewarded this land and continue to do so. From that sort of history all the way till now with the ambitious climate action plan we just passed and the goals that we have, I think we have a dedicated group of people who see the importance of this place and who put effort into building an infrastructure that actually makes it possible. We have a long history, you know, starting with the gold rush and then, of course, the anti-war activism. And that was also part of the environmental movement in the 60s and 70s. And then, of course, Earth Day in 1970, which was huge. I feel very privileged to work for the city because we are on such a forefront of environmental issues. And we get calls from all over the world, really, to get information on how do cities create zero waste programs like we do in San Francisco. But we're looking into the future and we want innovation. We want solutions.